When it comes to starting an anime series, there are two types of people that mainly go through some kind of ritual or go through some kind of plan. Uh, the first one is someone who watches an anime series do a three episode test and decides if they think the show is good just by watching the first few episodes. And then there are some people who, you know, it's the minority and the majority is a three episode test, but there are some people who uh, go through that same mindset, except only go through just one episode. Now, I am neither of these guys because I never really put myself into a plan for watching shows, says the guy who put himself into a plan of making a Studio Ghibli film once every two videos, but no, the point is, is that I've never really put myself into a plan that much, and uh, for the most part, the results have been pretty universal, regardless if people are watching the first few episodes, or if people aren't even in a plan at all, when it comes to some of the most popular anime out there right now. As in, for the plan of fuck it and watch it, that's just been the plan that I've had to determine if most of, most of these shows are pretty good. But when it comes to the show that I'm talking about right now, this is a very different case. This is something that I haven't seen in a while. And I feel like I'm not going to see that much uh, ever again. I don't know. I mean, who knows? Maybe there's going to be an anime series. Not this season, but maybe the next one. That probably will have the same thing. Who knows? I don't know. The thing that sticks with me about this show that I'm going to be talking about, the first episode of this show, was very eye-opening and would have caused many people just to stop the show there because of uh, because it is just so not bad i don't want to say heinous either but it's just it just didn't look right it didn't make me feel right at all uh but um, i'll get more to explain about that later in the video the thing that makes it interesting is that you know while the first episode everyone just did not like or at least i didn't like it the rest of the series didn't have that same amount of shock value that episode one had and to me it was for the better which brings me to the one and the only mysterious girlfriend x mysterious girlfriend x is directed by ayumu watanabe written by deku akao and it was made by a studio known as hoods entertainment it came out in the spring of 2012 and is 13 episodes long. It is a romantic comedy. Oh, actually, this may be different. And it was adapted by a manga that had 12 volumes released from 2004 to 2012 in the United States here from 2006 to 2014, I believe it was. The story follows a guy named Akira Tsubaki after he sees a new girl in his class, Makoto Urabe, sleeping after class after seeing her A, sleep during class, and B, would wake up from said sleep and laugh hysterically. Yeah, that's a very, very bad sign right there. She, she wakes up and she leaves and Tsubaki is left standing there looking at her desk and there's like a puddle of drool on her desk. So what does Tsubaki do? He fucking like is curious about, apparently he's that curious about girls and decides to, I don't know the word, consume? He straight up puts her drool in, her, in his mouth, okay? <laughs> I don't know how the fuck to say this, okay? Uh, this is actually bugging me. Um, but it's because that, it's because that he had her drool that, that he would be sick for the next couple of days and he wouldn't go to school. Uh, one day while he was sick at home, Urabe stops by and cures his fever by, get this, she feeds him her drool this time. I don't know anymore. Like, I'm just gonna say this right now. I had to say to say this later. As far as I can tell, there is no explanation for this. I don't know why this is a thing. I don't know why this is a thing. I don't know why the scissors is a thing. I don't know why this part is a thing, but I don't think it was meant to be explained, honestly. But we'll get more into that later. Uh, so after she feeds him her drool, she tells him afterwards that her drool is basically like nicotine <laughs> where he has to have it if he doesn't want to get sick and they start this plan where they both meet up after school so Urbe could give Subaki his fill <laughs> oh shit it's it's like an addiction basically it's there's like addiction there there's like pheromones in it that keeps him wanting more apparently I don't know why at all <laughs> This was when Tsubaki discovered that he had a crush on Urabe, and he would later admit this to Urabe, who now is his girlfriend. 
and the rest of the series follows the two as they both cope with the fact that they are in a relationship and slowly form a bond over the fact that not only does Hubaki taste Urabe's drool, it's also the other way around, as for some reason, every time that Urabe would taste Subaki's drool, I am not joking, she sees his memories and dreams, I don't know why, she sees his memories and dreams for fuck all reasons, because I, I can't, there's probably a reason in the manga, okay, because I didn't read the manga, I am now more open to reading manga than I was ever was, so, you know, there's probably a reason there. I just haven't found it yet, because right now I am losing my mind over just the fact that this is a thing! Okay, whatever. I, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. But that's not the only thing I have to say about this show anyway, because believe me, there's a bunch of things that... Uh, I've actually caught my interest in a positive manner, even though I've just spent a big, the last few minutes ranting, in a way. But no, the rest of it's going to be fine. The rest of it's going to be good. Uh, I'm going to get into, I think, the things that got me interested about this show already. There, were, there was really nothing behind the scenes about it that I can find. Or, To be honest, this is, this is, just, a, this is just a review I just wanted to make. This is not any of those in-depth reviews that I've been making <laughs> for since I began, but, you know, let's just get into the point. Uh, the one thing that sticks with me when it comes to Mysterious Girlfriend X is what it made me feel throughout the series. When I watched the first episode, to say that I felt nauseated and wanted to throw up was an understatement. Because of all the recurring events that happened, it came out of nowhere. Uh, keep in mind, when I first heard of this show, all I know is that, A, the show may be pretty decent, uh, but then again, it was just a guy who just straight up likes Urabe for some reason. And two, it's full of drool, and I was told it was disgusting from everybody else, so I came in knowing that there's a chance that I may not eat that day, and I mean, uh, that was kind of right. But apart from just that first episode, uh, <laughs> uh, the rest of the series was actually pretty mellow, and while it does have the common theme of consuming one's saliva, the story as a whole is actually a story about two, I completely forgot, I think they're middle school kids, they look like middle school kids, uh, comprehending the feeling of love that not that many romance anime portray. It just so happens that, yeah, the girl has unexplainable superpowers through drool, but other than that, it, I mean, it does, in my opinion, better what other romance anime does. Not all of them, though. I still like Toradora. Toradora is still pretty good, but Mysterious Girlfriend X is in a league of its own right here. This was something that I honestly was very happy to see in a romance anime, considering that in most cases, romance anime are very unrealistic, <laughs> with very predictable characters, and something that when we're done with it makes us realize that this is the only place where we can see a show like this. this the anime is the only thing, only place where we can see a show like this, and if we ever tried any of this in real life, uh, you're possibly either going to go to jail or to have to sign a restraining order. The results vary depending on the thing that you did, uh, which makes Mysterious Girlfriend X special in this case because it shows some pretty good realism in that regard. Uh, a quick note about the drool, yeah, it is pretty consistent throughout the series, but after the first couple of episodes, uh, this interaction that they have after school uh, with Urbe and, and Tsubaki basically... basically... I don't even want to say it, because I, I actually do want to eat today, and I just woke up, but uh, <laughs> uh, but it, it's not all up in your face after the first couple episodes, and it doesn't make you pay attention to it. In fact, after a while, it just, you know, it's just a normal thing. It just happens. Uh, it just becomes a part of the normal routine, and uh, to me, the severity of the incident goes down to just measly fan service. It's just... Nobody wants to touch this compared to normal fan service. But the rest of the show does explore the ever-evolving relationship between Urabe and Tsubaki. Going back to the first episode, the first big thing that really happened was uh, Tsubaki saying, Oh, no, I I want to prove to you that I love you. I want to prove to you that, that I have a crush on you. He pulls out his... Well, he has like a picture of... Her, uh, it was his middle school crush. Yes, okay, I think they were in high school because it, it's his middle school crush. He rips it up to say that hey, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be going towards you now. I will be 
your boyfriend. I will trust you. And that was like the first big thing that happens. And uh, as the series goes on, you're going to see less of the disgusting shit and more of shit like that. Because that's the reason why this show is really good is because it, uh, it just pulls off more stuff that, like I said, not that much romance anime has ever really done before or not done that much before this show came out. One thing that really sticks out to me regarding the characters is that Tsubaki is one of the best representations of a guy in their first relationship I've ever seen. Uh, I, I was never really someone who really was after relationships, I just, you know, wanted to do my own thing, but especially in middle school, I knew a number of people who were in this very same situation. Middle school, an absolute cesspool of, of relationships and and puberty. Good, good fucking god. But anyway, Tsubaki is a prime example of why love doesn't make sense sometimes because there would be times where, you know, he doesn't want to be with Urabe compared to times where he does. Uh, there would be times where he is proud to have Urabe by his side, but you know, in some cases not so much. But it's these inconsistencies in his character development that makes him easier to stand compared to an MC in a rom-com which doesn't have these aspects, or the worst possible case, an MC in a harem. Now we go to Urabe, possibly the most memorable character uh, in the series, while Tsubaki represents how a guy would act towards their crush. In a way, Urabe is the same thing, except, the, except it's the other way around of a girl going towards a guy. Even though she has these abilities to see people's memories and dreams just by having someone else's spit and uses a pair of scissors so proficiently uh, that, can, that he, she can easily cut a guy's own chin chin off if, uh, she, if she's pissed off. She is a very compelling character to watch both through her development and visually, what she does basically. Uh, while the show does mainly pay attention to the two main characters, there are a couple of classmates that play a big role. Uh, and how the relationship plays out between both of them. Yeah, I didn't know if you saw, I don't know, this is, I have no idea, this is, this is literally a last minute thing, because I just, uh, I don't know why I thought that was a good idea. I have all this shit in my room, and I just decided to bring that out for some reason. <laughs> uh, okay, the animation is another thing about this series that I really love, mainly because of how nostalgic it looked. Uh, the studio that made the series, Hoods Entertainment, did a really good job of capturing the same 90s feel that the manga had, which was funny enough, back when the cliches we see today uh, were fairly original, because this show, again, strays away from the normal rom-com cliches and does its own thing. The music for Mysterious Girlfriend X really caught me off guard, because I, when I first heard it, the soundtrack especially contained uh or consisted of this dark and strange tracks which work surprisingly pretty well because of the subject matter in the show and uh, after listening to the opening and ending a couple of times i'm starting to do a thing where i listen to them while i'm making the script uh i'm i could say that i'm a fan of both of those tracks they're both pretty good overall mysterious girlfriend x the best way i could say it is that it's disgustingly good uh, I know that there's going to be people who are going to agree with me on this, and there's going to be people who are going to disagree with me on this. I know at least one person on either side of the, of the debate. But uh, if you were going to ask me, this is actually, at the end of the day, a very underrated rom-com. Uh, Urabe may not be best girl, but she is pretty fucking memorable. I don't know what else to say other than this is pretty good. I mean, just get past the first episode, and you'll be fine. You're going to find out exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, if you want to know what this show has to offer, just power through episode one, and you'll be good the rest of the way. And with that, I'm going to give Mysterious Girlfriend X an 8 out of 10. Thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, if you like this video, if you like the series, hit the like button down below. If you want to see more videos in the near future, hit the subscribe button both on the screen or down under this video. Uh, right next to my channel. If you want to see any videos that I've made in the past, there are videos on the screen, down in the description, and down on my channel. And, uh, it uh, looks like I gotta get back to Studio Ghibli stuff. So, uh, with that out of the way, my name is Payne, and I'll see you in the next video. Let's see. Oh.
can't see. I can't see. I can't see. I can't see. 